Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, we have a massive shift going on in the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the skew is changing, and I'm going to explain what to look for tomorrow. But it's very important for us to understand just the basics. Here is the 55, and now we are just sitting right there. The past 24 hours has changed things drastically. The past two trading days, things have changed drastically, and it's really not even reflective in what you're seeing here. We're gonna just jump right into this on the hourly. Now, if you do the pre-market public calls, as you may or may not do, but we do them every morning at eight o'clock. Sometimes they start a little bit later, 8.15. I show this private cloud that I use, and one of the things that I always pay attention to is the color shift. Now, for me, green means go. Yellow, yellow just means that I wanna put myself in a position where I wanna watch what's happening. So for our purposes, I'm just gonna click off the smaller cloud and I just wanna show you something. So when I see these changes, I wanna pay attention to them. And right now we're yellow. Now that's okay because you can flip back to green. Green means go, yellow means caution. I'm not the smartest bulb, so that's just what I do. It makes my life very, very easy to just look at color-coded things. Now, when you get to the top of this and you start rejecting like you're doing here, that's a red flag to me because it means that they're respecting the cloud. So what I tend to do when I see this is I want to start going through the sectors as well and seeing if we're seeing any rotation into the sectors. And quite frankly, we're not seeing that rotation. Now, if I flip this over to NQ, I'm seeing the same thing. I got right into the cloud today and just complete Matumbo, complete rejection. This is not what you want to see. So that leads me to start diving into this stuff a little deeper, which we did today now. We had some data that came out today and it wasn't great. And a lot of people didn't actually get the part that wasn't great and we're gonna address it in a moment. But here's our support level on the NQ and we broke. So here's our support level on the NQ and we broke. I don't think I could be any clearer and there's a reason I'm repeating that. What we wanna do is saying, okay, do we have a leading index? Quite frankly, we don't. Do we have a leading sector? We don't. And that leads us to start looking at what's going on internally. Now I'm gonna go through a lot here in a very short period of time, and I'm doing it so that I can get this out in a timely fashion. But we're gonna start, and you might wanna watch a couple parts of this again. I'm gonna go over some things that would normally hold for a Saturday video, but overall tech names, IGV, there's really nothing better, you can use XLK, but XLK, just so you know, which is the S&P technology, 23% of that is Apple, 22% is Microsoft. IGV is more skewed, right? It is more broad based out, so please consider that. Now, what are you seeing here is a 200 day moving average. And I want you to know this and I want you to be aware of this before tomorrow. You have broken that. You are below the 200 day moving average. The last time you were below this was March, 2023. It's been about 18 months, roughly 16 months since you've been below this. This is not ideal for tech. A matter of fact, tech moved very fast to the downside. And there are some people that had some notes that they went out pretty hurriedly today on what's going on. I'm gonna show you one of those notes from one of the investment banks today uh, that came across my desk. And it's very important for you to get what, what they're saying. But if you look at this very clearly, nothing about that looks great. Go and take a look at the socks. Now, what I wanna to explain to you is what I just showed you on IGV. This usually leads. The expanded tech software sector tends to lead. Now, why, why would I say that? Well, if you just take a look at the socks for a second, we overlay that. What you're gonna see is as we start to move here, right, with the IGV, they look pretty similar, don't they? See how this would move up and then it would go sideways, and then what happens like a month or two later? You start to see the socks start to come down, don't you? So what are we seeing right now? We're seeing semis up and what's down, right? Very similar, see how this marked that February 24 high, and then it took about a month later, March 7th, and we had another high there. I'm doing some of this tonight. You will see more of this on Saturday's video, obviously. I just want you to be prepared for what could happen tomorrow. So you understand when it's happening and why it's happening. And this is, a, this is an issue, and we'll explain why it's an issue in great detail. On Saturday today, we're gonna to give you the guide so that it's actionable for tomorrow. But if you see this, well, this is eventually gonna catch up. That's what this is telling you. I do think that that is a distinct possibility. And we've been talking about this for some time this week. If you note, the tone of these have changed a little bit. Um, I trade what is happening. I can have my beliefs, but I trade what is happening. For the past two videos, I've been preaching the, that the NDTH, which is NASDAQ stocks above the 200 day, that they have broken and they have started to roll. And that is exactly what's happening here. Now, when we see that this is starting to break and roll, and at the same time, we were watching the cues. That, remember, they were going up. We're gonna clean up all these levels. Remember how the cues were going up at the same time that the NTTH 
was actually dropping, which is telling you that you have an issue. So when we're seeing these issues, we have to be cognizant of it. So right there, we're just looking at the technical sides of the market and we're starting to see breaks. I'm gonna explain why we're seeing these breaks, but it's really important to get this. IGV leads, we just showed you that that led, and that leads the socks. Does it mean that tomorrow everything's gonna to fall apart? No, but it does mean that you're going to start seeing more volatility, and there's a reason for that. Let's get to that before we start showing you things that you're a little more familiar with. Now, in front of you is a portion of an email that comes from Nomura, and this comes from their head of, he's their technical guy, but he does more of the equity side of the market uh, for Nomura, and a very smart guy, and you listen to him when he speaks. And I wanna just go through this, because this came out in an email today, and it's very different than where he's been for the past two years. So I just wanna show you where they're at. The big picture, and that's a clip out of there, the US equity index vol regime shift is continuing in real time. Okay, so. This is what's happening, and you're, you maybe you've noticed over the past couple days, you're seeing a shift in the momentum. Did you notice how fast everything is just dropping to the downside? Like there's just there's no levels. You're just you're just ripping through everything, right? It's much faster. Everybody's waiting for those bounces, and there's no bounce. We just saw that today. We'll get into it. From extreme flat to now sharply steeper skew. So skew means. How are the CTAs positioning themselves? And we can get into all that later. But if you have a flat skew, it just means that, oh, if you're doing this, then that's okay. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll do some of this and we'll grind higher. Sharply steeper skew. What does a sharply steeper skew mean? For all intents and purposes, and we'll do more on Saturday, but just get this. Potential for larger drawdowns and crashier index moves to the downside after what has been 1.5 years of crash up only. Meaning, where was the risk to the market recently? The risk to the market was up. If you weren't in, oh, I gotta get in. I'm gonna miss it. I gotta get in, right? Now, the skew has changed, okay? This is a major shift. I can't be any clearer about that. It's why I wanna get out tonight and didn't even wanna wait till Saturday. It's been one and a half years of crash up only. Escalator up, right? Elevator down, I usually say the window. And the skew shift with relative demand back to the downside goes hand in hand with the shift to back to more traditional negative spot vol correlation, either spot up, vol down, or spot down, vol up, which along with call vol gets mushed. We will see markets look more escalator up, elevator down as we move forward. Grinding rallies, but the, sa but the sell-offs are gonna be vicious. I'm using the word vicious. He said large, he's much more eloquent than I am, right? He said larger magnitude sell-off, vicious selling. You're already seeing that. You saw it today and you're not used to it, right? That's why I wanted to get this out. Uh, please comment if I explain that and you get the a concept. Elevator up, escalator down, or <laughs> escalator. I'm not. I'm not cutting that out. Escalator up, right? Elevator down. All right, you got it. Good. Now, why am I saying this? Because I want people to be aware of how ugly this can get. So names like Nvidia, they can drop. Okay, just because they're cheap does not mean they can't get cheaper. Okay, we can always pull back if the skew changes and they change what they're doing. These can get back to the 960 level. That can happen. And it doesn't, it's not going to take weeks. Okay? It's going to take days. These are the kinds of moves that all of a sudden you can see in a market. It's my goal to inform and educate here. It's not my goal to prognosticate and tell you where things are going to go. So when I see this and I have a bar on a name that I own a tremendous amount of that all of a sudden completely encompass the entire move and we close at the low of that entire earnings move, well, you're setting up for a gap fill. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, you figure your first level here is that 1064, 1065. You, you could be there tomorrow, right? That can happen way faster than you think it can. And now you know why that can happen. So I hope you're connecting those dots. Again, throwing a lot of information out there in a very short period of time. And I want you to get the concept. So that's the first thing to take a look at. Take a look at what happened with Microsoft today. When was the last time you even remotely saw a move like that? It was here. And then we went from there. Look at that solid bar. That is a Marbuzu Black. Now, if Dell didn't have earnings tonight, I was going to go short. But Dell's earnings had me wondering how they were going to do. By the way, Dell was a dumpster fire floating down the river. And we're going to get to that. So if we look at this... That is not ideal. I've seen ideal before and it doesn't look like that. We are closing below the 55. So as long as you can get above the 55, you're fine, but you're gonna start seeing rallies sold on these names unless we're bailed out tomorrow 
which I'm not so sure we're gonna be bailed out by PCE and we're gonna address that as well. But we're gonna keep the short sweet and pack it in for time's sake so I can get it out sooner. If we take a look at Apple, Apple's holding, why? More of a flight to safety, right? We have a low PE name, we're getting a dividend and it's holding right for now. But that is part of the XLK. And the reason that I'm showing you this is 45% or 46% of XLK S&P tech is in this. So when you're looking at this, you're skewing yourself if you think that tech is holding. That's why I'm showing you IGV. If you know, you know, if you know, you know, institutions are looking at the IGV. They're getting a sense of that because it's broader than the XLK. Please understand that. It's why I'm showing you what it is. All right. So if we understand that text breaking, we understand that the skew is changing and we understand the pressure. What is leading to the pressure? Why are we seeing pressure on the market? This is re a really important concept. Now, the concept is stagflation. And what you're looking for, this is from Jamie Dimon, he said it a couple of weeks ago, and it's starting to pick up steam. What we're seeing is between the government spending that's going on right now, meaning inflation's gonna stay higher longer. If you keep spending, it doesn't really matter if they cut rates or raise rates. It's just, it's just the way it is. I'm not gonna get into a whole econ lesson on it, but this is a big deal. And so you're getting higher inflation and you can get higher unemployment, which means that you're gonna get, why would you get higher unemployment? There's only one reason, if corporate profits aren't there and they're not gonna hire, right? Well, this is where it gets super tricky and this is what happened today. GDP comes out today. Now when GDP comes out, what do we see? We see 1.3. This was the previous number, 3.4. And now we're at 1.3. 1 1.5. Anything under 1.5 is almost like negative growth. So this is recessionary. It doesn't have to be negative, but when you start seeing this kind of stuff, this is, this is pretty bad. And we just assume that it's consensus and we're like, okay with it. It's not ideal at all. And so this is becoming a problem. Now, on top of that, we have other issues out there, but the biggest issue that we had was this, and nobody's, nobody was talking about it. We went over it in the public call and I was actually thrown off on the public call because we didn't drop. I thought we should have dropped. Corporate profits are negative. If you have corporate profits negative, that is like that. If you take all the companies and they're all negative and you're supposed to be at a 3.9% growth, like that is some massive recessionary stuff, almost depression level stuff. I kept waiting for them to revise the number. I kept waiting for it to like, oh, they have to fix that. There's no way that that's the case. So if you have negative earnings growth, okay, and then you're here, that's one thing. But the negative earnings growth, when you're supposed to be at 3.9, if the S&P EPS goes negative, there's no way that this market is staying up and it will be an elevator down. It will, this is a problem. And we're starting to see this reflective in the reports that are coming out. And that was really the issue. Now, the flip side of this is that when we looked at something like PCE prices and we get PCE tomorrow and we'll see, but the previous was 2% with 3.4% GDP growth. Okay, so PCE prices are dropping and now we're at a previous 3.4. Well, now we're at a 3.6 on PCE prices and the growth is a third of what it previously was. So do you see how that could be negative for corporate profits? I'm just giving you an example. You know, one of the things that we always go over um, for those that are new is we just go through the stool and I'm just gonna pop it in. And again, I don't have time to edit, so bear with me. But we go through the macro, the fundamentals and the technicals and it's all linked together. But if the macro part of this, meaning the GDP part of this is plummeting down and and we're watching corporate profits plummet down, then, the, the, then we have to understand that earnings are going to miss and the technicals are gonna get a heck of a lot worse. If GDP is coming down, right, and corporate profits are dropping and the cost of goods is going up and earnings are dropping, which is clearly the case because goods are going up in price, right, and people are buying less, well, that's gonna hurt corporate profits. And therefore, technically, we're gonna get worse. It's all connected, hence the stool. So when we understand that and we look at something like IGV, we start going, oh, this makes sense. Now, technically speaking, there are a lot of things that I could show you. The absolute, as I like to say, most glaring thing that I could show you would just be MACD. And so that's what we're gonna do. I just want you to see this. Now, MACD for me, and when I like to use it, let's go to this MACD weekly, and then we'll flip it to the daily. Why I like to use MACD is I like to see the turn. I like looking for the turn. Now, this is the cues that's in front of us. For some reason, it's not showing the date and we're just gonna have to rock and roll with it. We see this cross right here? That's, that's not ideal at all. And we start talking about the new highs, new lows and what's going on there. That's not ideal at all. Take a look at the SPY and the cross that just happened today. 
And you can literally go through every single index as of today, every single index, the Dow, the IWM, they all crossed. It's the first time we have had all four cross in 2024 at the same time. So this is definitely on my radar. And we saw this with the, the diamonds the other day and how they're plummeting. But the most important thing to take from this is it's not one index, it's all the index. And then if we start looking at things like S5TH, now we're gonna get to the, the, the fundamentals. I wanna show you the earnings in a moment. But if you start looking at like S5TH, which is uh, S&P stocks above the, five, you know, the 200 day moving average, they're plummeting and we don't wanna see that, right? And so these are all things that we wanna pay attention to and all things that we wanna look at. And I'm connecting a lot of dots fast. We never want 50% of the names to be below their 50 day moving average, and they are. And that shows us underperformance. Now there could be bounces and there obviously can be changes if earnings are good. But overall, are earnings good? So let's just take a look at something. What we do every week in the community as we just look at all the earnings that are out there. Let me do it this way, sorry. And if you are on the wait list, a bunch of invitations did go out, but let's just start with Wednesday night before we even get into Thursday night so that we can take a look here and go through and go through some of these. So this is Agilent, which is a tech company. How did that do? Hewitt Packard actually did fairly well today and the stock responded excellent. Um, maybe Dell should get, take some pointers on how to run a conference call because that was a dumpster fire tonight. But even names like storage, pure storage, that crushed, absolutely crushed, raise guidance. Look at this move to the downside. So what can we take from these two names? They're buying the lower beta names, the safer names. They're buying the lower betas that are closer to basis. For how long? I don't know. But we take that note. That's one thing to take away. But the PSTGs, that's not going great. NTNX, Here's a great example, data center. These are supposed to be knocking the cover off the ball. Look at what we did here. Okay? So are earnings going well? And you just start running through them. Here's OKTA. Look at earnings. Look at how they beat. Their guidance was good. You're down 8%. So you have decent guidance and they're still crushing you because they're looking at the future. And then you had companies that just absolutely were dumpster fires on, you know, and they just blew up. CRM was really bad on guidance. If you look at the paper, it doesn't look as bad because of what they did to get to this beat but their guidance was God awful. And then you saw this earlier in the week with Workday. Now I've been showing these clips for some time and one of the clips I'm showing is that if the S&P take out seven names, if you took out seven names, S&P growth is actually negative. You'd have negative growth, the Magnificent Seven. But what happens when these other companies start missing so much based upon what we just went through that it doesn't even matter what those seven companies do anymore, right? Do you see, hopefully you can see where this is going. We're gonna get more into it Saturday, but I want you armed tomorrow before PCE. So uh, if you find value in this, please share it. I think this is really important for people to get this concept. But if we take a look at some of these other names like NTAP, how did this go? I thought it was a decent quarter. They're selling it down because they didn't guide to, the guide wasn't too great. What we're seeing more than anything is retail squeezes. This was something we did in after hours tonight. We'd had a really good trade on. Time's sake, I'm not gonna walk you through it. But then we just get into dumpster fire after dumpster fire. And then you look at MDB. Yeah, they beat, but guidance was disgusting. Why is guidance bad? Because of the things that we just went over. So companies are not spending the way that they were. Marvel, okay, here we are again, down 4%. They beat by a little bit, but guidance wasn't great. ZS is the bright spot to me this evening, but even this would make me concerned tomorrow and wonder if this is gonna fade. And then you get into names like Dell. This was an absolute dumpster fire of a conference call. It was, I don't know if it was the CEO's first time speaking, I'm being facetious, but it was really bad. Like he actually said, oh, you know, we, we sell the servers, but they're more of a loss leader. We just wanna get in there. It's like, what about that? <laughs> what? Like when, if you have the time, listen to a conference call, because it's the exact opposite of how a conference call should go. But overall, it was good. It was not great. This is not what you need to be doing. You missed the whisper number and your guidance was not great. You can't do this and have a call like this. So this was what I would consider disappointing. And that's going to lead to some of this having follow through tomorrow. Now, the only thing that could possibly help us for follow through to the downside is PCE. And I'm not sure that that's going to.